Bonjour à tous. From day one, our government has been working with the provinces and territories to keep Canadians safe and address this pandemic. And this morning, I want to begin with an update on where this work stands. Yesterday, the Premiers and I, along with Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, had our 11th First Minister's meeting since this crisis began. We discussed the very concerning reports regarding certain long-term care homes in Ontario and Quebec. What the Canadian Armed Forces reported is deeply disturbing. That any senior would face this kind of treatment is unacceptable. And as I said to the Premiers, our government will be there to support them as we work together to ensure that our elders receive the care they deserve. In our meeting, we also talked about what we need to do together to help businesses reopen and get people back on the job while keeping our communities safe. Moving forward, it will become even more important to quickly identify and then isolate this virus. To do that effectively, we need to coordinate across the country. A number of provinces have already reached out to us for support on contact tracing, and our governments are currently working together on a data sharing platform. And yesterday, First Ministers were briefed on the work being done by the COVID-19 Immunity Task Force, which will coordinate blood test surveys across Canada. The Premiers and I also spoke about support for workers during this difficult time. Our government will continue discussions with the provinces on ensuring that as we enter the recovery phase, every worker in Canada has 10 days of paid sick leave a year, because no one should have to choose between taking a day off sick and paying their bills. Hier, les premiers ministres, la vice-première ministre Freeland et moi avons discuté des rapports très inquiétants parus cette semaine concernant certains établissements de soins de longue durée en Ontario et au Québec. En tant que pays, on doit faire mieux pour nos aînés. Comme je l'ai dit au premier ministre, notre gouvernement sera là pour les appuyer et on va collaborer pour faire en sorte que nos aînés reçoivent les soins qu'ils méritent. Lors de notre réunion, les premiers ministres et moi avons également parlé de la façon dont on peut travailler ensemble pour détecter rapidement le virus et l'isoler. Les premiers ministres ont reçu une mise à jour concernant les travaux du groupe de travail sur l'immunité COVID-19 qui va coordonner les analyses sanguines à travers le pays. Nous avons aussi discuté de la façon dont on appuie les travailleurs durant cette période difficile. Notre gouvernement poursuit des discussions avec les provinces pour faire en sorte que lorsqu'on va commencer la reprise, chaque personne ait 10 jours de congé de maladie payés par année. Notre gouvernement travaille aussi avec les dirigeants des Premières Nations, des Inuits et de la Nation, Nation Métis pour soutenir les communautés pendant la crise. On a déjà fait toutes sortes d'investissements, que ce soit pour offrir des prêts aux entreprises autochtones, des emplois aux étudiants ou des services à ceux et celles qui vivent hors réserve. Mais on sait qu'il nous reste encore du travail à faire et aujourd'hui, on franchit une autre étape. This morning, I can announce that we are investing $650 million to support Indigenous communities on health care, income support and new shelters for women. Let me start with the first pillar, which is health care. Although we've made progress, there are still communities that are not properly equipped to handle a COVID-19 outbreak, and we need to address that. That's why we're investing over $285 million for public health in First Nations, Inuit, and Métis communities. These funds will go toward more nurses, will help procure specialized supplies, and will support work with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis communities on continued community-driven responses. Having the right health care is essential, but it isn't the only concern facing communities right now. Because of this pandemic, a lot of people also need a hand in paying for the basics. So, as the second pillar of this investment, we are boosting the on-reserve income assistance program. This money will support people living on reserve who need help paying for things like groceries, cleaning supplies, or rent. A portion of this funding will also help First Nations communities continue to provide services like skills training and support for people as they navigate federal benefits. The work being done in communities, by members of the communities, is incredibly important to help people get through this very challenging time. 
And that brings me to the third pillar of this funding, investment in shelters. In April, we announced $10 million so that emergency shelters for Indigenous women and children could adapt to the new challenges posed by COVID-19. This is vital support in the short term. But in the long term, more still needs to be done. So today I can announce that our government is investing an additional $85 million for new shelters for Indigenous women. These shelters will be built in communities across the country, including in the North. No one should have a place to stay when they're unsafe. No one should be for no one should have a place to stay no one should have to stay in a place where they are unsafe. No one should be forced to choose between violence or homelessness. These new shelters will offer a path forward when people need it most. Ce matin, j'annonce un nouvel investissement de 650 millions de dollars pour aider les communautés autochtones à traverser cette crise. De cette somme, plus de 285 millions de dollars seront investis dans les soins de santé. C'est de l'argent qui va permettre d'augmenter le nombre d'infirmières dans les communautés des Premières Nations et d'acheter du matériel spécialisé. Les fonds seront aussi utilisés pour appuyer le travail qu'on accomplit avec les communautés des Premières Nations, des Inuits et des Métis, pour trouver des solutions à long terme axées sur la, les communautés en matière de santé. Nous allons également bonifier le programme d'aide aux revenus dans les réserves pour aider ceux qui vivent dans les réserves avec leurs dépenses quotidiennes. Et une partie des fonds de ce programme permettra aux communautés des Premières Nations de continuer d'offrir plusieurs services importants. Finalement, on investit 85 millions de dollars dans des nouvelles maisons d'hébergement pour les femmes autochtones. Ces nouveaux refuges qui seront situés dans les communautés vont offrir aux femmes un endroit sûr et des ressources lorsqu'elles en auront le plus besoin. I want to end today with an update on another measure we've taken to keep Canadians safe. Earlier this morning, Minister Garneau announced that large cruise ships will not be allowed in Canadian waters until at least October 31st. This decision extends the one we made in March, which was taken to protect our coastal communities. COVID-19 is still a very serious threat, but with the right plan and with the right investments, we will weather this storm together. Merci.